Yo, what's going on guys? Vegan here, back again. And today we're going to be talking about, you guessed it, Godzilla again. Today we're going to be talking about the animated versions of Godzilla. I know there are several versions of Godzilla in animated form, but we're just going to talk about the three major ones. The Godzilla from the Godzilla animated series, the the Hanna-Barbera Godzilla, and I'm finally going to talk about Godzilla Earth today. I'm only talking about these three because these are the only significant ones with good feats, and I'd rather focus on these three for a video instead of making one long video about all of the animated Godzillas and not being able to cover them all thoroughly. So you guys remember that one weird uh, 1998 dinosaur movie with that big lizard creature? Well, it turns out that at the end of that movie, another one of those lizard creatures appeared. And it's what based the new Godzilla cartoon, Godzilla the Animated Series. And basically that version of Godzilla is the baby that hatched at the end of the 1998 movie. But he's way cooler than his father ever was. He stands at 55 meters and 60,000 tons. And he can actually breathe fire or atomic breath. This atomic breath is also said to be composed nuclear radiation or ionizing radiation. And this is really significant because ionizing radiation can actually reach speeds of 1% the speed of light or over 800,000 times the speed of sound, or Mach 800,000, which is a crazy baseline speed feat. He's also good at hand-to-hand -hand combat with other monsters, and he even is good at stealth for how small he is. He's just as stealthy as his father who could sneak up on military planes just by hiding behind buildings, and he can even manipulate heat and is highly heat resistant due to him just being able to stand in lava. In terms of Zilla Jr's feet, he was actually able to battle his father from the 1998 movie. And the 1998 Zilla was, was given cybernetic parts, making it Cyberzilla. And Zilla Jr was able to defeat his father, meaning that he should also have the baseline feats that Zilla from 1998 has where he's able to casually dodge a missile. Zilla Jr. can also create thunderstorms and tornadoes in just a beam clash. He can easily run at around 300 miles per hour. He was able to lift 5 million tons, which is 5 megatons of force. He's able to throw other monsters around entire city blocks took a city block worth of electricity with no effect, created whirlpools underwater, and his atomic breath is capable of melting steel and turns sand into glass. He fights other monsters while submerged in lava. His atomic breath can burn other monsters and blow chunks off, chunks off a mountainside. He can also dig through mountains, obliterate a mountain underwater, and withstood a volcanic eruption that ruined an entire island. So, Zilla Jr. is easily in the mountain to large mountain levels of power, and if you want to highball him saying that the volcanic eruption was able to ruin an entire island, you could maybe claim that Zilla Jr. is maybe island level. And for all those all those Godzilla down players from the MonsterVerse, uh, this Godzilla was also able to take on a Gorilla Yeti monster, so he's used to fighting gorillas. So Zilla Jr. is easily able to surpass the speed of sound and can reach relativistic speeds with his atomic breath, which is no surprise because he is the original Chad, as we all know. Oh, moving on to Hanna-Barbera Godzilla. Hanna-Barbera is the meme himself, has fueled the Godzilla fandom with the best images, and it's from the same dude that created Scooby-Doo, so, you know, we're in good hands, guys. 
He's around 122 meters, but only 600 tons. He actually has a fire breath. So he's one of the only Godzillas that actually breathes fire. But he makes up for that in, in the fact that he can shoot heat vision out of his eyes. Which are stated and said to be lasers. Which lasers are usually able to reach the speed of light. There was even a study that lasers can smash the light speed record and lasers actually have the potential of reaching 300 times the speed of light and even beyond that. But that might be considered a highball. They should at least be able to go at the speed of light. And this would also count for Hanna-Barbera's normal combat speed because he's able to react and tag other monsters that can react to his heat vision. He can also self-sustain himself as he doesn't really need food, giving him high stamina. He can also resist mind control, poison, high gravity levels, acid, petrification so you can't turn him to stone, and he can resist magic. <laughs> It's the 70s, guys. Calm down. HB Godzilla is able to survive lava heats. He withstood electric attacks, can battle monsters made out of acid, and react to fighter jets, which can go at six times the speed of sound. And I hear a lot of people when they talk about HB Godzilla about how, oh, well, he doesn't really have that many speed feats, which couldn't be really further from the truth as he has a couple of really good speed feats. He's able to cross the globe in minutes, which at minimum would make him 390 times the speed of sound or Mach 390. He was able to toss a spaceship into outer space from, from the ground, which is 500 times the speed of sound. He was able to throw a monster from below the sea to the moon. So he was able to throw a monster from below sea level to the moon at speeds of 56,000 times the speed of sound. That is 5% the speed of light. So he's a fast boy, despite how thick he is. For strength feats... HB was able to seal a volcano and was able to lift a glacier, which isn't nearly as impressive as Zilla Jr., but he was also able to overpower a spaceship that had a magnetic field strong enough to pull a moon-sized asteroid. Not only would that make him 4% the speed of light, but... He was able to overpower a force that was going to pull a planet-sized asteroid, which would at least be around a large planet level of force in order to overpower that force. So, Hanna-Barbera Godzilla is at least large planetary and can reach the speeds of sound and even go beyond the speed of light. For a comparison, Zilla Jr. with those mountain feats could easily be a Category 5 Kaiju from Pacific Rim and would give Gypsy Danger and Gypsy Avenger a really hard time. But Hanna-Barbera Godzilla would completely destroy the entire <laughs> Pacific Rim verse. Even Mega Kaiju couldn't do anything to him. And for those King Kong down players, here is Hanna-Barbera overpowering and fighting another Yeti monster. So there's that. I've seen some people interested in debating on which animated Godzilla is stronger, Barbera Godzilla or Zilla Jr. Not only does Hanna-Barbera have the cartoony cartoon logic on his side, but but the feats really don't lie either. Zilla Jr. at most was able to withstand an island being destroyed, while Barbera Godzilla was able to take and overpower a spaceship that was going to destroy the planet. So you can't really compare an island to a planet, really. Not only and for speed, Zilla is completely outclassed, 
Zilla at most may be going at 1% the speed of light, but Barbera can potentially be going hundreds of times faster than light. So there's really no comparison there. Now to the big boy Godzilla Earth. I've been waiting to touch on this one and most of the reason why I was waiting was because I wanted to give a thorough explanation because some of the stuff he does is just otherworldly and there was a lot of wank about him going around which I wanted to dispute but let's just get into it. First I'm going to be going over Godzilla Phileas and for Godzilla Phileas, I'm also going to be including the feats that Godzilla Earth did um, before he got so big because Godzilla Phileas is basically just the young version of Godzilla Earth as well. Prequel feats are also going to be put into Phileas. So Godzilla Phileas is 50 meters or 10,000 tons heavier than Barbera but lighter than Zilla Jr. Godzilla Phileas is immortal in the sense that he has eternal life in which he could pretty much live as long as he wanted to and via his regeneration ability being so crazy he could pretty much be killed and still regenerate back as he doesn't really have any vital organs in his biology as he's mostly a plant-like creature. He has plant manipulation, he can manipulate the plants around him, uh, he can create force fields, he can create an EMP effect, and his atomic breath is a type of particle beam which also is around the speed of light. So his atomic breath can also reach the light speed. For feats, he's able to generate 180 gigawatts of energy. He was able to tank 150 nuclear warheads, so basically all of the planet's nuclear supply. And he was able to destroy the Himalayan mountain and its continental plate. So this boy, before he even got to his 100 meter stage, could already level a continent. And he was able to instantly obliterate the planet Gorath, which even Final Wars Godzilla couldn't do. Now I know people say that he needed to wait and charge energy in order to shoot the red spiral ray in order to destroy it, but Godzilla Phileas was also able to take out Batra in that universe, and Batra was also said to be able to destroy Gorath before it went to Earth, so he's more powerful than someone that could have also easily destroyed Gorath, so I don't think he really needed the preparation. It would also scale to Final Wars Godzilla because Final Wars Godzilla failed to destroy the entire thing before it hit Earth, while whereas as soon as uh, Phileas's beam touched Gorath, it instantly obliterated. So that would make him even more powerful than Final Wars Godzilla's feet, making him in the relativistic speeds as his beam was supposed to, his beam had to tag Gorath before it hit the planet. And Gorath is a small planetoid, but it also has a mass 6,200 times the Earth's mass. So it's like destroying 6,200 Earths by destroying Gorath. So Godzilla Phileas is easily in the dwarf star levels of power with relativistic speeds. And this is before he even became Godzilla Earth. Now the big baby boy Earth um, he is now over 300 meters tall and 100,000 tons. He is also able to self-sustain himself as he doesn't really need oxygen or food. He can duplicate himself, making uh, Godzilla Phileas and the Servum or whatever they are. And that also is an example of biological manipulation because he was able to create the Servum, so he's able to manipulate his biology. Um, he can negate regeneration, as he did in the prequel books. I believe he did it to Gaigan. So if you're able to regenerate, he might still not care. Because <laughs> he's just the Chad of all Chads. 
He also has sound and vibration manipulation in a special form of atomic blasts. He also has atomic heat where he makes a giant pulse of heat around him to melt his surroundings. And he's able to manipulate radiation as he's able to produce a high amount of it around him. He produces radiation like most other Godzillas, which is a given. And he only has really two major feats in City on the Edge of Battle. He was able to destroy the Mecha Godzilla Development Complex, which is a city-sized structure. Not too impressive, especially compared to Phileas. But without a doubt, Godzilla Earth's best feat is overpowering Ghidorah's space-time shields and overpowering Ghidorah. Now, that might not sound like much, and it really didn't mean a lot in the movie itself, but Ghidorah is an extra-dimensional entity, meaning that he exists in higher dimensions. Now, what I mean by that is... Alright, let's say you have a piece of paper, alright? You draw a dot, just a little minuscule dot, all right? It is zero dimensional. It has no length, no width, no depth. It's just nothing. That is no dimensions. It doesn't have any dimensions to it. Now, draw a line. That line, it's infinitely greater than that is infinitesimal speck because that line also has length, whereas that dot doesn't have anything meaning that that length is infinitely greater than that little speck. Now, you can also draw a square. That square now has length and depth, which is that depth part of it makes it infinitely greater than that line, which just has length. Now, if you take it a step further and you grab like a Rubik's cube or a cube in real life, that cube has length, width, and depth, making it infinitely greater than that square you just drew on your piece of paper. That's what I mean by dimensions. You know, 3D movies, 3D means three-dimensional. Like, our world is three-dimensional. The bed, the chair that you're sitting on is three-dimensional. You are three-dimensional. Now, this next part is highly debated on, but it's really important because a lot of fictions delve into it. There's also a higher dimension called the fourth dimension. Now, it's debated on what the fourth dimension actually is, but in most fictional verses, it's time. It's supposed to be time. So, uh, you're a three-dimensional being. You exist in three dimensions. Now, you need time in order to do anything in order to move in order to live you need time in order to exist if time stopped and stopped existing you couldn't do anything that's what the fourth dimension is now Ghidorah exists beyond physics and beyond our universal laws so he is beyond time itself which makes him a higher dimensional being so Ghidorah exists in a plane of existence beyond our physical universe. Where time itself doesn't mean anything to it. Now Godzilla was able to overpower Ghidorah's space-time shields and shatter them. Now that means that Godzilla's atomic breath was able to shatter space and time. Which means that... Godzilla Earth is beyond space and time, beyond our physical universe. Godzilla wasn't able to do much to Ghidorah at the beginning because Ghidorah had intangibility hacks. But as soon as they got rid of his ability to become intangible, Godzilla is able to overpower him with his physical force, physical power. So that would mean that Godzilla is even stronger than Ghidorah and is able to overpower him, which means that he can overpower time itself. That would make Godzilla easily infinite 3D or fourth dimensional, which means that Godzilla would be universal plus or beyond the space-time continuum, meaning that he could destroy the physical universe if he so wanted to.
It basically means that Godzilla has infinite power in our 3D universe. Now, when I say Godzilla Earth as has infinite power and is beyond the universe itself and could destroy the universe, I'm not saying that Godzilla is unbeatable. I'm not saying that Godzilla can defeat anyone. There, because fiction is a large and ever expanding. Because there's a bunch of crazy concepts in fiction, and there's a bunch of characters that are even beyond time itself, or beyond countless dimensions, beyond a thousand dimensions, beyond dimensions in themselves. Like, there are numerous examples of characters that could defeat Godzilla Earth, like Rune King Thor, uh, SCP-682's True Form, Thanos, the one above all, True Form Darkseid, Lucifer Morningstar, and Yogg-Sothoth, who exists beyond dimensions themselves. There are many characters that could defeat Godzilla Earth. But despite that, he is a powerful, extremely powerful character in his own right. So that's it for me today. Um, I'm definitely going to try to upload more videos quicker for you guys. But I'll see you guys in the next topic, discussion, and video.